Hey, welcome to this uh, lesson video about factoring quadratics. Um, we're looking at the form x squared plus bx plus c. So the big thing to remember here is that there's understood to be a 1 in front of your x squared, okay? Because this is going to be a different video about when there's a number other than 1 there. But we're just looking at when there's a 1 in front of your x squared, so your x squared is by itself. Our learning target is to be able to factor quadratics of this form. Um, but before we get started actually um, factoring, let's try some puzzles, okay? So I've got this x puzzle, and it says find the pair of factors that multiply to the top number and add to the bottom. So what numbers would multiply to 15 and add to 8? So off to the side, maybe you want to think about the pairs that multiply to 15. 1 and 15, 3 and 5. Is there any way I can get an 8 out of any pair of these numbers? Well, yeah, 3 and 5, if I add them, I would get an 8, okay? So that would finish my puzzle. All right, what about uh, if I've got negative 21 on top, so I want them to multiply to negative 21, but add to a negative 4. So maybe before we even start thinking about numbers, let's talk about signs. If something, two numbers multiply to a negative number, what does that mean? That means one of them had to be negative and one of them had to be positive. Okay. So now let's look at 21 and think of its factors. 1 and 21, 3 and 7, and I think that does it for us. So out of these two pairs, is there any way I could get a 4? Well, I'm looking at this pair. Is there any way I could, one of those numbers being negative, make them add to a negative 4? Well, a good rule of thumb is whatever you want it to add to, out of your pair, make the bigger number the negative. So uh, whatever the sign of this number is, the bigger number should also be that sign. So since this is a negative 4, between the 3 and 7, the seven's bigger. So I'm going to make 7 negative. So then that way when I add, I for sure get negative 4. Okay, let's try another one. Whoa, multiply to negative 30 and add to a 1. So again, multiplies to a negative number, so that means I need one of each. I need a negative and a positive. So if I think about 30, it's got a few pairs. Um, oops, and I skipped over 2 and 15, didn't I? 4, 5, and 6. So out of these pairs, do you see any way to get a 1? Well, I'm looking at this 5 and 6, and I know if I take 6 and I subtract 5, I would get a 1. So that trick I was telling you on the last slide, 1 is positive, so the bigger number of the 2, 6, should also be positive. So if I make the 5 negative when I add, it's like I'm taking away 5, so I would have a positive 1. All right, I think we've got one more puzzle and then we'll move on to the actual factoring. I've got a positive 36 and then they're supposed to add to a negative. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Multiply to a positive but add to a negative? Well, for anything to multiply to a positive number, it means you either had two positive numbers or you had two negative numbers. That's the only way to get uh, multi multiplied to a positive. So I'm thinking if they add to a negative, maybe I should have two negative numbers. Well, let's figure it out. So if I think about the factors of 36, there are quite a few. I might not be able to write them all out, but let's see. 3 and 12, maybe if my computer keep up with me. 4 and 9, uh, 5, uh, 6 and 6. Oh, okay, so maybe that's my pair. Is there any way I can get 13 out of these sets of numbers? Well, I'm looking at this 9 and 4. So if I get negative 4, negative 9, then I will get my negative 13. Okay? So those puzzles were kind of fun. They make you think a little bit, right? Uh, we're actually going to use the, this X puzzle, if you will, to help us factor. So we're actually going to move on to factoring now. So factoring means break it down. Break it down into groups as far as you can. So here's this trinomial. Notice, like I said, what's in front of x squared, it's a 1, okay? When it's of this form, we want to make a factor tree, or excuse me, an x puzzle, <laughs> where the 7 is the top number, what it should multiply to, and the middle number goes on the bottom of your x, which is what we add to. So what will multiply to 7 and 8? 
Well, that's kind of easy because there's only one pair of factors, one and seven. And by golly, those sure do add to eight. So these two numbers, they're important to me because the factor of this guy, I'm going to factor him into two groups that have an X in the front. Because if you think about multiplying, you know, foiling, we would do X times X, and that's how we get the X squared. Now these numbers, one and seven, one's positive, so I'm going to put plus one. Seven's positive, so I'm going to put plus seven. Those numbers from the X puzzle, I just kind of plop them in those um, empty spaces, and there is my factored answer. So see how the X puzzle really made it easy for us. Okay, so now remember in front of N squared, there's a one. So that's why I'm doing this X puzzle method. The 10, the last number goes on top. The negative 11 goes down at the bottom. So what will multiply to a positive and add to a negative? We had one of these, remember, make both of them negative. So if I start a factors, list the factors for 10, let's see, one and 10, two and five, which one would give me an 11? This pair, but I already know that's supposed to be negative one and negative 10. So my X puzzle is complete. So this time we're gonna have parentheses that starts with N's. N times N is how I'd get N squared. Then I'm just gonna use my numbers from my X puzzle to fill in the blank, minus one, minus 10, since they were negatives. Okay? All right, just a couple more. Ooh, okay. X puzzle, negative 90 on the top because it's the last number, but whoa, what number's there? Oh, there's a one there. Okay. So what will multiply to negative 90? So multiply to a negative, so I need one negative and one positive. But then they're supposed to add to a one. What? All right. So factors of 90, I might not do them all. I might just do some common ones. 2 and 45, 3 and 30, 4, 5. I know there's a factor of five, but I don't think it'd do me any good. Uh, I think I'm gonna jump to nine and 10. So out of this pair, can you see any way to get a one? Hmm, well, I'm thinking nine and 10. What if I subtracted nine from 10? So if I have 10 and I take away nine, so make nine negative, so you take it away, then I would get one. So that's what I need for my factoring. This time my parentheses are gonna start with M's. And from my puzzle, I would put minus 9 plus a 10. Okay. I just got one more for you, and then I think that'll be good for this one. Is this it? Yep, this is the one I wanted. So, now this might look different. This only has two terms, and you know some of our, our other examples had three terms. Well, still it's important to note what's in front of this m squared. It's a 1, so I'm still doing this x puzzle thing. But when there's no term in the middle, that's understood to be a zero, okay? They didn't write it because it was a zero and they didn't need to write it. Now it's not a one. One would change your problem. It's a zero because adding zero would not change anything, okay? So I've got a negative 36 on the top and I've got a zero on the bottom. So I, I multiply to a negative, so that must mean I need one of each, a negative and a positive. So the factors of 36, oh, I've already done this on another page, but oh well, let's see, four and nine, six and six. Out of this pair, is there any, these lists, do you see a list that I could possibly get a zero from? Hmm, oh wait, if I have six and then I take away six from it, I would get zero. So if I have one six and then a negative six, if I tried to add those, it would be zero. So that would be my two groups, m minus six, m plus six. Okay. So that completes uh, our video for factoring x squared plus bx plus c. Uh, hopefully you find this helpful and uh, keep having fun guys. See you the next time.